morning students today we will discuss about the classification of living organisms already you have one class uh, on that chapter uh, so so uh, i would like to uh, take uh, do a review what is classification classification is the arrangement of organisms into orderly groups based on their similarities so you know that uh, we have numerous animals and plants that is the living organisms in our world and it is not actually easy to identify any animal uh, and uh, to recognize any unknown animal or uh, organism actually so classification is the easiest way to identify to recognize any unknown living organism that can be animal or plant or any microorganism anything and uh, classification is actually discussed in the subject that is known as taxonomy at first aristotle uh, he had given the classification system of living things like plants and animals into two division based on their characteristics then we came to know about whitaker's five kingdom classification and um, on this uh, classification system we got five kingdom the first one is kingdom protista then second one uh, uh, sorry five first one was kingdom monera second one kingdom protista third one kingdom fungi fourth kingdom of plantae then kingdom kingdom animalia so we got five kingdoms so among uh, these five kingdom actually today we will discuss about the classification of kingdom animalia so how do we classify the animals or how do we classify actually the living organisms we classify them into seven steps each of them are called uh, uh, one rank of the classification system the first one is the kingdom second one is the phylum third one is the class fourth one is the order fifth family then genus then species so these are the seven steps or rank of uh, one classification system and you have to write all these all these steps serially you cannot write class before phylum or family before order you have to write this serially so these are the seven steps of classification and kingdom is the highest rank and species is the lowest rank now this classification system was given by carolus linnaeus who is actually considered by the uh, to be the father of modern taxonomy again remember taxonomy is the subject where we discuss about classification and uh, he is considered to be the father of taxonomy based on his uh, classification of living organisms based on the characteristics and he had also given the system binomial nomenclature now what is binomial nomenclature when we classify any organism uh, into these seven steps then the organisms their similarity decrease and they increase in number and when we go go from kingdom to species they 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 are increase in similarity and decrease in numbers and when we go from species to kingdom then sorry when we go from species to kingdom then decrease in similarity but increase in number occur now check out the classification of human their kingdom would be animalia then phylum is chordata chordata means they are containing the vertebral column then class is mammalia because they feed on their uh, mother at the young stage then order is primate they can grip by their hands then family is hominidae genus is genus is homo and species is sapiens again kingdom animal kingdom would be animalia then phylum is chordata 
class is mammalia order is primate family is hominidae genus is homo and species is homo sapiens so this is the classification of any human now if you combine the name uh, of genus and species then it would become homo sapiens right so this homo sapiens this name would be the scientific name of any human so this is the process how we make the scientific name of any organism you have to combine the genus and species name of that organism and you would get the scientific name so this process of giving scientific name of any organism living organism is the process called binomial nomenclature by by means two so binomial nomenclature by means two nomial means name and nomenclature means giving clarification to the name so homo sapiens look at the scientific name of human so what you can see there is no underlining right but when you are writing the scientific name in your copy uh, that means handwriting scientific name then you have to underline separately both the words otherwise it would be wrong so let us look at the rules of binomial nomenclature or giving scientific name system of giving scientific name so what would be the rules at first it would have it would have two parts like homo sapiens it would have two parts scientific name would have two parts and first part would be the genus name and second part would be the species name that would th that is the first rule it has two parts second rule is is first part is the genus name second part is the species name then the third rule would be you have to underline separately both the words not one single underlining both the parts would be underlined separately i am saying again and again and then the fourth rule would be it it is uh, the scientific name is actually coming from the latin language latin language okay and the first letter would be capital letter and other letters are small and when we are getting the scientific name in printed form then it would be italic again look at the last rule it would be italic form in printed form so this is the classification of kingdom animalia and based on their cellular level based on their cellular level and tissue so they are divided into several phylums here uh, actually 11 phylums are given but in your textbook you are given nine phylums actually phylum 1 porifera then phylum 2 cilentrata phylum 3 platyhelminthes phylum 4 nematoda phylum 5 annelida phylum 6 arthropoda Seven mollusca, eight echinodermata, and nine chordata. Among these nine phylum, the last one, chordata, is separate because they are it is containing the vertebrate animals. Other eight phylum from one to eight are the invertebrate animals. This is one difference. So look at the picture again. Only the chordates. only the phylum chordata is containing the vertebrate animals and the others are the invertebrate animals now we will check out the characteristics of first phylum that is phylum porifera and here the animals are actually known as sponges why because they look like a sponge you uh, you know about a sponge like what we use for uh, washing anything or Uh, rubbing uh, or soaking water so like that sponge these animals are con called the pore bearers they contain numerous pores in their in their body you can check out the picture and they have one open cavity 
that is called ostium and these are the numerous pores so through these pores they do the gaseous exchange or water or nutrient exchange and they do their uh, uh, respiration or digestion and uh, actually they are the simplest multicellular organism they don't have any compact tissue their uh, body structure is very simple okay so these are these are the characteristics of the animals belonging to phylum porifera check out the examples this is scypha and this is the spongila that is that are given in your textbook so these are the pores in the surface of their body and this is the osculum or uh, and these are the examples okay now the next next phylum is phylum nidaria and you can easily uh, identify some tentacles in the body of nidaria so check out the animals here all are having some tentacles like structure in their body and they also have a body cavity these are some examples of phylum nidaria actually this is the structure of hydra what is given in your textbook this is polyp and medulla and uh, hydra look like uh, hydra this one look like the looks like the polyp and check out this picture uh, so they are having one body cavity known as cilenteron and these animals uh, actually these animal they can reproduce by creating one bud in their body and when this bud is detached from the mother body then it becomes the new uh, new newly developed organism so these are the tentacles and the body cavity here is known as cilenteron and uh, keep in mind that these organisms these animals have two layers in their body that is ectoderm and endoderm look at the structure they they have ectoderm ectoderm and endoderm in their body two mesodermic layer that's why they are called diploblastic animals ectoderm and endoderm two layers and that's why they are called diploblastic animal and in their body surface they have some special structure called the nidoblast and these are the nidocyte inside the nido site uh, you can see there is a lasso like structure rope like structure and when they uh, can when they can response uh, when they can uh, sense any uh, microorganism or food then they will uh, throw out their this lasso like structure and and will capture that prey so this nidoblast this nidoblast is a special structure of the uh, nidarians so these all are the characteristics of the nidarians that is from the phylum nidaria and uh, previously this phylum was known as phylum cilentorata because of the body cavity again remember their body cavity is known as cilenteron so this is your class work today what is classification then b number what are the rules of binomial nomenclature identify the phylum of organism a in c number so what is organism a obviously it is spongila and you would find out that this this organism shown is uh, spongila and it belongs to the phylum porifera why then you write down the characteristics then d number compare between organism a and b so you would compare the characteristics between uh, uh, spongila and hydra and keep in mind that compare uh, keep in keep it in your mind that uh, comparison means similarities and dissimilarities both you would uh may you can make a table or you can write in your write your answer in points also
and you have to complete this set question in your copy now last of all to summarize the whole topic why we are doing the classification first point to organize and second point is to identify we can easily identify one any uh, any one any organism then we can easily communicate with others that means uh, by using the scientific name we can easily recognize any organism in any place of the world and uh, other benefits are uh, <clears throat> we can easily accurately name the organisms and there there won't be any misunderstanding like uh, by hearing the name starfish and jellyfish uh, we won't assume that they are fish they are actually not fish they are belonging from another phylum that is echinodermata you will learn later and we are using the same language latin language or in some case greek for giving the scientific name so these are the uh, benefits of classification and that's all for today thank you